mandate, a movement, and an instruction to raise youths of different colors and nationalities to impact their world and bring about the light of God even in this dark world. To help youths that are yet to find their purpose, discover it, and help those with already discovered purpose to fulfill it. To create an atmosphere where youths can fully experience God in order to express Him in this broken world. We uphold integrity of the world with no ambiguity in its teaching. We present a platform where the Word of God can be learned in a simple and fun-filled way. Youths from different backgrounds can form communities that can help in working together to achieve a common goal. Growth is inevitable due to the availability of resources that stimulate growth and, most especially, a platform where we can all celebrate ourselves. We are Bethelites, experiencing and expressing God.
Can we thank the Lord? The Bible says that, yea, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Can we bless God? Can we bless him? Can we thank him for victory? For victory that he has given us in Christ Jesus. There was a victory that you have, that you have obtained by the, by the reason of Jesus Christ. By the reason of being in Christ, there is victory. 
There is victory. There is victory. There is victory. We are in a battle. We have been in battle. Humanity has been in battle. Man, your forefathers and your fathers before have been in battle. This world is a world that is full of battle. But I want us to lift up our hands wherever we are today and give all the glory and all the praise to his name. I want us to thank God because God stepped in. God stepped in and brought a victory in Jesus. I want you to bless the Lord. Thank him. Father, we bless you for the victory that you have provided to us. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise for how Christ stepped in our place and he won the victory for us. The Bible says that he, he took the keys of death from him. From him, we defeated him that had the keys of death, him that had the power of death. I want you to thank God because even everything that represents death in your life, the Lord Jesus has been victorious for you. The Lord Jesus has won the victory. He has won the victory. He has won the victory. Hey, Jesus, we bless you. Let us bless him. Let us thank him. I don't know what era in your life it is that you, are, that you feel or you think you are experiencing defeat. I want you to begin to lift up your hands in praise and begin to worship God in faith. Thanking him, thanking him, thanking him, thanking him because you know that the Lord is working. The Lord is working. The Lord is working. The Lord is victorious. He is the mighty one in battle. Hey, we bless you, Jesus. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. Oh, we bless you because everything, everything, I don't know what it is. It might be sickness in your body. It might be an exam that you're about to take. I don't care how many times you might have taken it. I want you to know that there is nothing that is impossible. There is nothing that is too difficult for God to do. I want you to bless him. The Apostle Paul said that we give God the glory who leads us in victory, who leads us in triumph. Oh, I want you to thank him. 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 <clears throat> there might be battles on every side, but we have a God that is with us. The Bible says the Lord thy God who is in their midst, he is mighty. He is in your midst. He is mighty. I want you to begin to bless the Lord because he's mighty. He is mighty. He is mighty. He is mighty. He is mighty. I don't, I don't know what is that thing that you might be experiencing. That thing that you are having fear. That thing that you are having sleepless nights about. That thing that you have been struggling with for years. That thing that is speaking to you. You know, in this world, there are many voices. That are speaking against the victory that God has purchased for you in Christ. There are many voices that are telling you it will never be. This is how you would always be. This is how things would always be. This is how this is going to be the outcome. There are many voices that are defining outcomes in your life. But beloved, I want you to know that there is a victory in Christ Jesus that has been obtained for us by the suffering and the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus from the dead by reason of the relationship that we have. The Bible says that he has raised us up together and made us to sit together. I want you to know that no matter what is that thing that is saying, it will be silenced in the name of Jesus because at his name, every knee will bow. I don't know what is that situation, but I want you to begin to decree and declare with the confidence that you have in Jesus that it is well that there is victory in that place. In the name of Jesus, the will of God will stand. The will of God will stand in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. We give God all the glory. We give God all the praise. Beloved, I want us to pray for understanding today. Understanding. You know, the, the song that we're listening to earlier, it says, breathe your name. And the, the minister there kept on repeating a cool verse. He said, there's a spirit in man. The bread of the Almighty will give it him understanding. Understanding. Understanding is very, 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 very important. 
The Bible says, in all, the Bible says, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Understanding is very, very important. It's very, 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 very important. Understanding is what you lean on. Understanding is your, and understanding is your rock. Understanding is the way by which you live. It's your life on. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. If you don't have the right understanding, you'll be leaning on the wrong thing. If you don't have the right understanding, you would you will be trusting in the wrong thing. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. On your own understanding. It means that understanding can be a strength. It can be something you lean on. But I be, beloved, I'm here to tell you that if your understanding is wrong, you'll be leaning on a wrong strength. You'll be leaning on a strength that cannot carry you far. Understanding is very important. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 says that, that, that the Gentiles were alienated by God because their understanding was darkened. There's an understanding that is dark. There's an understanding that when you have it, you'll be walking in darkness. The way the Bible says that there's a way that seemeth right to a man, but at the end is destruction. There's an understanding that leads to destruction. There's an understanding that once you lean on, once you lean on, it will destroy you. There's an understanding that is vain. The Bible says that in the vanity of their minds, vanity is that which passes away, that does not endure. There's an understanding that when you have, once you hold on to it, you will it will end you up in something that will not endure, something that will pass away, something that you cannot rely on. But beloved, there's an understanding that is of God. The Bible says that he has come, that the Spirit of God has come to give us an understanding that we may know those things that have been freely given to us. The Bible says that he that spared not his own son, but actually not with him, give, freely give us all things. There are many things that God has given us in Christ Jesus. But you have to have understanding. Understanding is key. Understanding is necessary. I want us to lift up our voice today because your understanding, how you understand determines where you live, where you go to in life. How you understand determines your end. Understanding is very key. Understanding is the bedrock. The Bible says, I hear that hear at my word and do it them shall be like a man that built his house on the rock. And the Bible says that by the entrance of the word, give it light and understanding. That means that you need understanding to build your life. I want you to begin to trust God and ask God that Lord breathe upon me, breathe upon me. There's a spirit, the breath of the Almighty, give him understanding. I want you to begin to pray that the spirit of wisdom and understanding will rest upon you in the name of Jesus. That the Lord will reform your understanding. The Lord will shine light upon your understanding. The Lord will help you to crave for understanding. Understanding that is divine, understanding that is true, understanding that will last, understanding that is above all the situation and circumstances of this world, understanding that is above your enemy, understanding that is above this world, understanding that is above all the things that you are battling against, understanding in how to go, in what to do, in how to view things, in how to respond in different situations, understanding of what to do, understanding. Understanding that it's from the Lord. Understanding that will strengthen your life. Many of us, our lives are crooked. We need something that is called loud and clear. What is loud and clear is an understanding. Is an understanding. Is a word. Is an understanding that forms your heart. I want you to pray for understanding. Pray for understanding. Pray for understanding. Understanding is... When your understanding is dark, it alienates you. It separates you from the life of God. The life that God has in store for you. You need understanding to be able to live like God. You need understanding to be able to get deeper in God. When you are getting deeper, what God is sharpening is your understanding. You need understanding. I want you to pray for understanding. Every form of wrong understanding. That God will begin to wipe it out by the bread. By the bread. As the bread comes, understanding will come. To take away any form of wrong understanding. And to bring forth the understanding of the eternal God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your holy name. Father, we give you all the praise. Because we trust you that you would help us. We thank you for what you have done for us in Christ Jesus. We thank you for your victory. We thank you that we can gather together as saints. 
to freely discuss those things that you have given to us. Hey, we thank you for the power you have made available. We thank you for your great strength. We thank you for coming to upgrade our understanding, coming to rearrange and reconfigure so that we can think heavenly, so that we can live the life that you want us to live. Father Lord, we pray that you would help us to treasure understanding, to seek understanding, to seek wisdom, to treasure understanding more than gold, to treasure understanding more than what other things have to offer, to be able to live in understanding in the name of Jesus. As we gather here today, we pray you will bless our hearts, you will bless the ministrations, and your name will be glorified. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Bethel Church is hybrid. Three online services and one on-site service. The on-site service is held at 4352 West Parker Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. Introducing our B-Groups. Bible study groups, a time to fellowship together in the Word of God. Want to be a part of it? Text B Group to 312 833 2383. Want to be a part of the workforce? We are excited to have you here. Please text New Worker to 312 833 2383. First time here online or on site? We have been praying for you. Please fill our online form at bit.ly slash let us know you. Want us to pray with you? We will love to. Please fill out this form with your prayer request. We promise to check it and pray with you. Visit bit.ly slash personal prayer request. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at We Are Bethelites to get all the announcements and stay up to date with all of our upcoming events. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our services. We are Bethelites. We exist to experience and be expressions of God in a broken world. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, media, for the announcement. Hi, everyone. Happy to be here again. Last Saturday of the month, I'm so excited to be here with you all. Um, I'll just buttress some announcements. We'll take the offering and then we'll do the icebreaker. Um, so first timers, so if you're, us, if you're joining us for the first time, you were scrolling um, on YouTube and you saw us, we are glad to have you here. We've been waiting for you and we're praying for you. We've been praying for you. Um, we'd like you to fill out a form, one of our forms um, online. This is not to harass you. It's not to find out your mother's maiden name and all that. It's just for us to get to know you more so that we can give you the gifts we have for you, those car keys and all that awesome gift. So we are advising you to join, to, to fill the link. So it's bit.ly slash let us know you, bit.ly, B-I-T slash, forward slash, L-Y dot let us know you. So the U is spelled U as in letter U, not Y O U. And if you have any prayer points and um, you would love us to pray with you, Please also fill out um, fill out your request in bit.ly slash personal prayer request. So bit.ly. So the um, social media host, we put it there. Um, bit dot slash bit.ly slash personal prayer request. Now, if you want to get baptized, please text baptism to 312-833-2383. Um, someone is going to put it in the chat as well for those people who are interested in being baptized. Anytime you make up your mind, you can always send baptism to this number and someone will reach out to you. Um, our on-site service is next week, Saturday. Drum rolls. I'm expecting you guys to be excited. Please fly, drive, swim, get to church on Sunday, on Saturday, sorry, Saturday, 4 p.m. at 4350 West Parker Avenue, Chicago. We are going to be having a guest speaker, Reverend George, and it promises to be a wonderful service. Please do not miss out. Come to the service. We're expecting to see every one of you at the service. May 7th, next week, Saturday, 4 p.m. No African time, no late timing. Please be on time. And we're excited to meet you all. Um, and then we have Nikos 2022, another drum rolls. <laughs> um, so this is usually um, set, um, a, a um, service or I would say 
just for a few days we they are usually done by our parent church at victory house where everyone is invited it's from may 5th to may 8th um the timing is posted up there it promises to be a wonderful time we have wonderful wonderful uh, ministers we have our own pastor e we have dr k oh my god he's a wonderful man of god we have reverend george so please um plan to be part of this service um and so be, after this we're going to be doing our offering it's time to give this is the best time of the service uh we're expecting um every one of us to be part of it um the media team is going to put up ways to give up there and we're going to just quickly read second corinthians 9 verses 7 to 8 um, I'm just going to read it. It says, you must each decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully and God will generous, generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. And this was Paul admonishing the people of Corinth to give out of their little, that God has given us the grace to be able to give. So here we are excited about offering time because it's how we join um, Bethel Church and it's also how we join Bethel Church in what we're doing there in Chicago. And also it's a way for us to show our worship, to continue worship with God. So please let us um, follow the ways to give, whether you're using Quick Pay or Cash App. And please let us, um, admon well, I'm admonishing every one of us to join in giving today. Um, media team, you took it down. What some of us are here to finish pressing our phones. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm going to pray um, for our offerings. That is, assuming every one of us have had the opportunity to do our givings. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity we have to worship you with our offerings. You have provided and so we give generously back. Lord, we ask, oh Lord, that as we have given, that your blessings upon our life would continue in the mighty name of Jesus. For those who you know our hearts that want to give but are unable to give for whatever reasons, we ask, O oh Lord, that you show your mercy upon us and help us through the seasons of our lives. And let your name be praised forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. So, guys, it's time for our um, icebreaker. I happen to have the opportunity and the privilege to be here again for another I, I don't like it when people take my positions and doing this icebreaker, but you know, this is great. Everybody else is traffickers. If you allow other people to do it, they'll be cheating us. That's like the other day Moses came out. I don't even know what he did. Bishop Moses. <laughs> Anyways, today I have questions for you guys. Um, it's going to be fastest fingers. Um, I have three questions. Actually, it's like almost four. So like three, four questions, just to rub your feet. Are you guys ready? Faster, please be typing in the chat. I need to see. You are not, I want me to start calling you any Tolu times two, the two Tolus. Eddie Chubi is not here. She's not attending service. Alero Bo. You people should come and show your skills now in the chat. Come and show us that she went to Bible school. Emmanuel Arinze. All of you, please come and contribute in the chat. So um, my first question today for every one of you is, what is the meaning of Jesus? What does Jesus mean, basically? So please type everything together so that somebody else will not see your answer and copy. Number one, what does Jesus mean? What does the name Jesus mean? Number two, we've, we've quoted this scripture today 101 times. <laughs> not 101, that's an exaggeration, but at least twice. And so I have my question for me. So the question is, but you know the scripture but he, there's a spirit in man the breath of the almighty gives him understanding this scripture who quoted it who said this scripture and where is it found in the bible so whose words are these so you can type if you think it's a special revelation from to to don't don't see that's i think that's how you say his name you type it in the chat so whose words are those and where do you find it in Bible, but there's a spirit in man, the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. So that's the second question. Um, I think it's a two in one. So you have to tell us whose word it is, and then where in the Bible can you find it? Is it kind of a two in one scripture? 
And the last question, what is the 10th commandment? It should be the easiest. Please, this is not open book. Oh. Don't go and Google. Be honest to yourself and just come and show us whether you were missing Bible school, you were skipping the classes, you were buying stuff with your offering money. Come and show yourself. It's not open book. What is the 10th commandment? That's the easiest one. What is the 10th commandment? So please start putting your answers in the chat. I'm going to be looking at the chat to see if you guys have said answering other said, goes, you know, these are easy questions. These are really easy. I didn't even, you know, I didn't, I didn't ask people for Greek names. <laughs> I didn't go so hard on you. <laughs> so please come and show yourself. Please let the spirit of God give people understanding. <laughs> We are part of it. You are part of it. Contribute, contribute. Emmanuel Larinze says Jesus means deliverer. Um, Elio said it in Job. Um, he said, I read it this morning. Uh -uh. You know, because God, the, uh, this one is cheat, it's cheat. Because I was like, how do you want to know this one? How do you know this one? Emmanuel, I know that I still owe you shit. Uh, do not cover the neighbor's property. Okay, so Emmanuel is our winner today. He was really good, son of God. No, so Jesus means deliverer. He also the blood saves, deliverer, not saves. Um, David Balcoli. Oh, this is the first time I'm seeing you uh, comment in the chat. Hi, if it's your first time, if not, hello. Um, to blank. <laughs> I thought you were going to put don't see the musician. You shall not cover it. Okay, you were um. You, are, you have got like half of the answer, but Emmanuel is me and Emmanuel will share his gift, his uh, what do you call it? His gift card will divide it equally. <laughs> but Emmanuel got the answers like straight up first time. We are so proud of you. It shows that you've started reading your Bible, as you can see, you've read this morning. Please keep up the good work. Uh, <laughs> we appreciate we appreciate what you're doing, but yes, he's right. So Jesus means the Lord saves or deliverer. And then Eliu um, Eli was the one that said, there's a spirit in man when he was insulting Job's friends, other friends. He said, I thought there is, age comes with wisdom. He said, but there's a spirit in man and the breath of the Almighty gives understanding. And this is found in um, Job. I think Job 34 verse 13 or something like that. I've forgotten the exact scripture. I think it's Job, Job 32 verse 8. Job 32 verse 8. And then um, the tenth commandment is do not cover your neighbor's property thank you very much it was nice to be here again with you all um and we'll be going to the next section of the um service today and i hope to see you all next week saturday in person yes 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 wow congrats thank you for always bringing our gifts Please put your email address and send it to someone so that we can send you your gift. Let's clap for Emmanuel now. Is it easy to win? To answer all these questions? <laughs> but yeah, we are very proud of you. We're proud of the fact that you're going deeper in the world. You are, you are, you are extending your tentacles deeper. Inward, then outward. Amen. Hallelujah. It's so good to have us here again on Saturday at 4 p.m. I want to re-emphasize some of the announcements. On Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday, and on Sunday, we're going to be having NICOS conference. Please put the drum rolls in there. Now, this is a conference that our parent church has yearly, and we invite Reverend George Adigwe and um, Dr. K. Chichison. They come into Speak the word of God. I would advise you, even if you're if you are in Chicago, make your way down to this address, 4352 West Parker Avenue. Make it a priority to be a part of it, right? And if you're not in Chicago, the beautiful thing about this is there's something called YouTube. You can subscribe to the, the channel. The channel is Victory All the Way on youtube i hope i'm correct i think that's it victory all the way on youtube you can just go there and subscribe to it so that you don't miss thursday you don't miss friday you do not miss saturday saturday is going to be our event but it's an extension of nikos 2022 right and reverend george will be specially speaking to us on saturday make sure you are there and then on sunday it's going to be at 11 a.m nikos 2022 and then um the week after that, which is next week, no, the upper week, 
we have tribe conference please put another drum roll in there now if you're married you are single and searching you are single and not searching you are dating <laughs> you are engaged whatever you are you are complicated <laughs> God will not allow it to be complicated in Jesus' name. But wherever you are in your relationship status, this is a conference that you want to be a part of. It's going to be happening on the 13th and on the 14th of May. And we'll basically be talking about all ramifications of relationship life. If it's in marriage, in um, dating, in being engaged, courtship. Um, single and you just want to enjoy your singleness, that is okay. It's fine to be single. It's not a cost, right? This is a conference that would attack every area. Please make it in your calendar that I'm going to be a part of these two events, okay? May is packed up. Please, come on. So apparently we have two on-site services, not one, because we are actually in conjunction with Tribe. On that day, we're not going to be having a 4 p.m. event in Bethel Church. This is our saturday event these are saturday um fellowship these are saturday service rather these are saturday service for that week so make sure you are a part of tri conference we have put this together in conjunction with our pastor pastor C. so make sure that we are attacking our relationship life i pray that as you come god will bless you in jesus name amen and amen so right now we're going to dive into the discussion session and we have two amazing people that will be talking about what they learned this week. I have Tolu and me. I'm not going to call your last name because I don't want to murder it. Yeah, I will not pronounce it. You will not put me on the spot. And I have Ola Shupo. <laughs> I have Ola Shupo um, with Tolu and me. We are going to be discussing what you learned this week. Before we go into the discussion, I'm going to ask you guys, I, when I told you that you were going to be talking about this discussion this week, did that make, did that make you read your Bible? Be truthful. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, I think for me, no, not, it didn't, I didn't especially go to look for it, but then I was like, hmm. So, but while reading my Bible, I'm like, okay, should I talk about this? What should I talk about? <laughs> you know? I think that's what happened to me. What about you, Shifo? What did, what, what did the text do to you? All right. So, when you, you know, you reached out to me, like, um, sometimes a few weeks back, but mm -hmm. I, I was unavailable. But um, yeah, when you told me again, I'll be coming back. You know, it's just, it's not about what I'm studying during the week. It's about what God is, you know, teaching me and talking to me about in this season. That's what I decided to come share tonight. That's great. That's great. Okay, I'll let you guys yeah, have the Yeah, it wasn't what I learned during the week. Okay. He, he leaves the bulb in your head, Abby. <laughs> you say that, just, I go, yeah, that's true. That's what I did too. That's fine. So I'll let, I'll let Solo and me start. Um, just tell us, what did you... What is one thing you want to share with us tonight, like from what you have been learning this week? What, what has God shown you this week? I feel. Um, yeah. I think for me, what stood out to me recently is the fact that um, there's a process to things and there's a reason with God's, the way God does his things. There's always a reason and a process. And this was basically, I had, um, should I say, um, an enlightenment when I was reading Exodus. If you don't mind, can I read the the the, the oh, verse? Go ahead. So it was it's the book of Exodus twenty-three from verse twenty-nine. It says so. This was the time when God the Israelites were going to the promised land, and God took them there. So it, it, let me read it. It says, "I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you." Little by little, I will drive them out from before you until you have increased and you inherit the land. So basically, it, 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 it's just telling me that. So I have a role to, 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 to play. So my, what I'm looking for might actually be on the other side of my growth. So he had a reason for not. He could have sent all their enemies out of the land before they got there. But if he did that, the land would become desolate. So they had to increase. They had to get to the capacity where they would be able to inherit the land. So that stood out to me a lot, and I think I was blessed by it. Did you catch that remark? 
what I am looking for is on the other side of my growth. See, if you can, if you caught that, just type it in the comment section. We are going deeper. But that no, that was good. That was really. I had to take my pen to write that down because that <laughs> when I said I was like, this was here before because you know people would think, oh, why didn't God just send away all their enemies before they got mm -hmm. to the land? Mm -hmm. Or if He sent them away, the land will become desolate and it will become like mm -hmm. a, life had to be existing on the land for it to be yeah. made alive. You know. So, yeah. Wow, amazing. <laughs> amazing! Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for that. Okay, you have the floor, people. Um, we cannot hear you. Oh, all right. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Thank you so much for the opportunity given to me. I don't take it for granted. Um, so in this season, what I'm learning or what God is teaching me is that a lot of us, you know, as youth, as young adults, um, we are going for programs where, you know, we have a lot of things that, you know, we want God to do, but uh, we are praying for revival. We really want to burn for God but uh, the fire is not burning because the altar is polluted. You know, um, the, the heart, um, if you read the book of um, Psalms 51 verse 10, it says, Lord, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew my spirit within me. If you want to really burn for God, if you want a fire to burn, it starts from the heart. You know, it says that you are not, you are praying for fire. You are praying that you want to burn for God, but you're, you are not even revived. You are praying for revival. You are not revived. So um, it's for you to burn for God, for you to do amazing things and exploit for God, for you to keep the fire burning on your altar. It starts from your heart. You know, this song um, came to my mind lately. Is this um, um, this song by T.Y. Bello that says, um, is it, Lord, we are fire, we want to burn for you, this generational song, I know. And, you know, the question just came to my heart, are you really revived from your heart? Are you really revived? How is your, you know, don't focus on that, the issues of life. If you really want to burn for God, focus on Jesus. Forget about the issues that you are going through. Forget about the job you don't have now. Just focus on Jesus. He's the one that will make you born. For, for you know in this season and in this season that we are in this end time you need to really burn for god if not issues of life will just keep pushing you left and right you know imagine you are burning you're on fire for god there's nothing there's no room for depression trust me no room for fear so um in this season i'll just encourage us that we should you know um if there's anything that you need to go back you know sort with god and just ask for mercy so you can keep burning for him Amazing. Wow. Wow. So the fire is not burning because the altar is polluted. Wow. Do I need to speak this in a bit? I've spoken everything, all right? <laughs> but that's amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Wow. Keep it up. Keep it up. This is beautiful. It's beautiful to hear. Thank you so much. So Lou, thank you, last year for, for thank you. sharing with us what you what you learned this week. God bless you. Thank you. So we're gonna go into the word right now. But before we go in, I will do us, I'll do another icebreaker. No gifts. I just want to know what you learned. Um, we have done deeper for five, this is the fifth week, right? And we had four different topics from Pastor Mayokun. We had three, and then we had one topic from Pastor e. Please, in the comment section, what did Pastor Mayokun speak about for the first three weeks, and what did Pastor Emmanuel speak about on the fourth week? Or give us two minutes to type it. Fastest fingers, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. There's no gift. The gift is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> The gift is the Holy Spirit. What did what did Pastor Mayokun talk about for the first three weeks? And what did Pastor Emmanuel talk about last week? Come on, we're growing deeper. This uh uh nobody should write nobody should write deeper in this place. So deeper is the theme for the month. That's not the topic. The child got cheated. That's week three. I 
uh, uh, Pastor, Pastor Michael already said the fastest finger we get gift from him. Come on. Other boys, it just one topic you remembered. The child God chooses. <laughs> Guys, my two minutes is almost gone. One more minute. So you didn't take notes. One more minute. Going, going. Speed and pace. I'll be reading. Ha. Ah, Emmanuel, should we take back our gift? <laughs> Should we take back the gift we gave you? No, we won't do that. We'll show mercy. <laughs> going. 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 Your keyboard is locked at that. <laughs> okay. And it is, it is gone. It is gone. Yeah. I, I would remind us, like I said, the gift is the Holy Spirit. Okay. The gift is going to be reminded. He will remind us. He will bring to our remembrance. Staring the fire. I love it. I will hide your face. Staring the fire. Staring which fire? <laughs> On week one, we talked about the reality of my body and me. And Pastor Mayoko had talked about holiness, having two definitions, how we always looked at the moral um, purity. And we looked and he wanted us to look at it from a perspective of understanding that everything that God, holiness being described as God and everything he owns, right? That was when he talked about, we can call ourselves holy because God owns us. So if we know the reality of the fact that God owns me, I would be able to leave the moral part of holiness. Amen. And then week two, he talked about manifesting the God in you. That's where the staring day. <laughs> stare it up. Stare. <laughs> I learned about staring the fire. That's where the staring the fire comes from, I guess. But he said we should stare it up. How do we stare it up? We brag. We're going to brag about God, right? And then in week three, he talked about the child that God chooses. That's where he talked about stewardship as the bedrock of true greatness. And he said, Christ is a message to emulate, not just believe. That really stood out for me. That was like my, I was just thinking about that. Christ is a message I need to emulate, not just believe. Yes, I can believe in the name of Christ, but I need to emulate Christ too. That's what I'm called a Christian, right? Christ-like. And then week four, Pastor E came and he talked about rooted and grounded. And one thing Pastor E said about rooted and grounded, he said we need to take a personal approach. We need to probe more and ask questions, and we need to blot out, prune, and eliminate any any weed that will take us away from being rooted and grounded. And he said we need to focus on Jesus. With all this today, I will be talking about a flexible heart. When she was talking about the heart thing, I'm like, okay, did you look at my notes more? Yeah, I'll be talking about a flexible heart. Before we start, we just want to say a word of prayer. I'm going to say a word of prayer. Holy Spirit, we just want to welcome you here. Sweet Holy Spirit, we want to thank you. We love you and we're grateful for the gift of you. We're thankful that our Lord Jesus Christ did not leave us without a friend, without a helper, without a helpmate. Thank you because you are here to teach us. Thank you because you are here to guide us. Thank you because you are here to speak to our minds, oh God. Oh Holy Spirit, we pray that it will not be about what we think we know. We pray for a heart that will be willing to listen, a heart that will be willing to understand, and a heart that will be willing to let you take the lead, let you take the wheel and have all the control. In the name of Jesus Christ, at the end of this meeting, at the end of this um Assertion, this word that we're going to talk about. I pray that it will not just be what I say, I will not be seen, but I hide behind the cross of Jesus and I ask that you will be seen, all of you and none of me. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. We're going to be talking about a flexible heart. 
I was thinking about it and I'm like, I, I was just thinking if I'm going to understand the reality of my body and me, if I'm going to manifest all that God has called me to be, if I'm going to be able to stir up that fire and if I'm able, if I'm going to be able to brag about God without shaking, right? If I'm going to be able to achieve that, if I'm going to be the child that God chooses and I am going to be rooted and grounded in the word of God, I need a heart that will be flexible. I need a heart that will be flexible. Now, deeper, looking at the meaning, and it, it means standing down, right? You're, you're not on the surface. You are not. So it's like you go into a pool and you know how when you want to, I don't, I don't know how to swim, okay? So don't assume that this illustration is because I have been swimming. <laughs> but I would be in the water. I would put myself inside. I just will not go to the deep end. I will stay in the place where my leg can stand. But when it comes, when you think about deeper, right, I'm going to illustrate it with a pool. And if you know how to swim, you understand this illustration. So put your mind in it. Um, when you want to enter into a pool, the first thing you will do is you put your feet on it, right, to test how cold it is. Only the brave ones will just jump in. I'm not going to do that. You put your feet in, test how cold it is, right? Then you put your two legs in. Then you move in and you put your body in, right? But if you are staying on the part where your leg can still touch the ground, that is lack of faith like us. It's when you get to the part where you can float. That is you letting yourself go. You're letting the water carry you, right? For lack of better words. But that's deeper. That's that's really what deeper is. It's you you put your whole body in it. You put your whole mind in it. You put your whole heart in it. It's not just your finger, like you're, 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 you're testing it. Okay, let me test. How hot is it? Okay, if I, if I put my hand in it and it burns me, I'm going to move myself away. I will not do anything again. No, this is, I'm all in. That's what deeper is. And then what, what is flexible? Flexible is the capacity to bend. You bend easily without breaking. So you can go around it. You can find ways around it. You can bend, but you are not breaking. You're not breaking the rules, right? For lack of better words. Yeah. We're going to read in Matthew chapter 12, verse 1 to 8. This week I was just thinking about it. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to be speaking today. Oh my God. What will I talk about? And I was reading, I was just reading my devotion regularly, right? And I came across this across the scripture and it really blessed me. In Matthew chapter 12, from verse 1 to 8, I'm going to read from the message version. It says, One Sabbath, Jesus was strolling with his disciples through a field of ripe grain. Hungry, the disciples were pulling off the heads of grain and munching on them. Some Pharisees reported them to Jesus. Your disciples are breaking the Sabbath rules. Man, these Pharisees. It's as if they were just waiting in the corner, just looking at the side like, okay, let me see. Would they make a mistake? Okay, yeah, they just they just took the fruit. Let's go and talk to Jesus. Yeah. Then Jesus said, Really? Really? I'm imagining that like, really. Didn't you even read what David and his companions did when they were hungry? How they entered the sanctuary and ate fresh bread from the altar. Bread that no one but priests were allowed to eat. And didn't you even ever read in God's law that priests carrying out their temple duties break Sabbath rules all the time and it's not held against them? Verse 6 says, There is far more at stake here than religion. If you had any idea what this scripture meant, I prefer a flexible heart than an inflexible ritual. You wouldn't be nitpicking like this. The son of man is no lucky to the Sabbath. He is in charge. It says, I prefer a flexible heart to an inflexible ritual. A flexible heart. This story was talking about the Pharisees, right? These people are like the theologians theologians right in those days they are what they the job they gave to themselves basically was to was to judge people right like they were like the 
do it this way do it like this do what i say i don't do what i do they're the hypocrites that's what they call them in those days right so i i, I while i was reading the story i just had a picture in my mind i'm like okay jesus christ and the 12 disciples they were strolling right when we we're younger i don't know if we're in one in some part of the world when we used to visit my grandma me and my cousins we playing with tire right we're pushing the tire so i'm imagining oh, we'll be skipping and going on our errand maybe singing so i'm imagining they were just talking we're having fun but then disciples realized that their stomachs were making noise right like okay i think they hung out on the way this is not a fasting season like jesus christ said it's not fasting yet you can't be fasting with the bridegroom around right so they were eating like this is the vision of chopped life they were eating so <laughs> so they came across this tree this nice mango tree with some nice ripe mangoes and they're like huh this mango will be so good in my stomach and disciples maybe peter just said hey john do you see that mango john is like yes yeah, it did you want to pluck some john is like yes let's get some so they pick a stick and they hit the mango and the pharisees were on the side so imagine that the tree is on my left right we're walking pharisees were on the right i just watching them like, let me see what these guys are going to do she he said he's the messiah right he's the he's the king of kings he's the one that's going to save us let's see if he would if he would keep the rules and regulations that we're keeping right let's see if he's going to do it the way we are doing it and peter picks the stick you're looking like okay okay jesus christ did not talk he didn't talk okay peter hits the mango the mango fell ah jesus christ did not talk now peter picks the mango and is eating it like ha ah, he didn't say anything so they came to jesus like hey jesus we know you said you are the king of kings and the lord of lords right can you see that your disciple is eating unclean food he just took that mango he did not wash it but well, that's even unhygienic right but <laughs> let's go back to the story he didn't wash it and he's eating it and then jesus goes i'm sure they were just thinking maybe jesus Christ just change his position like hmm sometimes they were thinking that jesus Christ would just attack peter like why would you eat the mango and jesus turns to them and he's like okay I think you're getting it all wrong i know you are a bible scholar did you read the part where david and his men they went to the temple like pastor Malcolm was talking about on the on the one was talking about how sacred the things of God were right. It's not about the king, King Bel Belshazzar. That's the, that's the name of the king that used the cup, the holy cup, and what God did to him. Now David went into the temple with his men, and they ate the bread that God had said is for the priests. You know, in those days, they don't just keep things for people. It's not like somebody just came and said, "Oh, this church, we're going to arrange it for the priests." No they they do things according to what god says right not like they just decide things on their own and david eats it and he said god was not angry like god did not do anything to them now, did you did you did you read that part of the bible and i'm sure they're just there like okay where are you going to where where's your point where's your point where, where are you headed and then he said there is far more at stake it is more than this more than not eating the unclean fruits more than not washing the fruit before eating it more than all that more than the art word i need a heart that is flexible and this was one thing that the pharisees did not possess right they were people they were a people that lived according to rules and regulations i think that was one of their biggest downfall that's why they could not see that they had the Messiah in their midst and they were still waiting for the Messiah to come because they had, I guess they were expecting him to come in, in, in some kind of entourage, right? But that's not the point. They had an inflexible heart. So one thing we're gonna talk about today is I need a flexible heart. If I'm going to understand the reality of my body and me, if I'm going to manifest all that God has called me to be, if I'm going to launch into the deep this month and the rest of this year, like we said, we're going through deeper, right? We're going to grow 
in this our, our team for the year is growth right if we're going to grow this year if i'm going to launch into the deep i'm going to be rooted and grounded in the word of god if, if i am going to be the child that god chooses i need a flexible heart to be able to attain that i was thinking about the while i was, I was preparing to speak to us tonight i was thinking about luke chapter 4 verse 4 right um i'll quickly just go there but basically, it was talking about Peter in Luke chapter 4, verse 4. I'll read from NLT. Yeah, Luke chapter 4. No, I think I have the wrong thing. I have the wrong thing here. But basically, it was talking about when Peter went fishing. He went fishing. And they had told all night. They had been trying to catch a fish. I was thinking about all night. And I thought about when I used to go for all night if, um, programs with my mom. We would be there from 8 p.m. to like 6 a.m. Like literally from dark to dawn. And I assumed that all night might have meant that timing. Bible said they had told all night. I'm sure they had gone to every location. So maybe someone had told Peter, hey, this is where the fishes are. Let's try this place. And Peter went there. Yeah, I think it's... Yes, it's Luke chapter 5, verse 5. That's what I wanted to write. I don't know why I wrote 4, verse 4. My bad. Luke chapter 5, verse 5. It said they had told all night, right? I'm sure somebody had told Peter, because he was, he was not doing this alone. He went with his... With his peeps, he, was, he had people with him who were trying to fish. They had done this, they had done that, they had tried this, they had tried that, it did not work, and they would be frustrated, right? I imagined life in general. A lot of us here might not even know how to fish, right? I don't think many of us have even thrown anything like that into the sea, so we might not understand that. I brought it to life in general, I brought it to my life. Maybe I have been trying so hard. I've been reading for this week. I have read. But every single time I write the exam, it feels like, hey, I did not even touch any book at all. Like they had told all night. They had, they had gone every place where they think the fishes were. And then they were tired. And the Bible said, in verse 5, it says, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, that's verse 4, now go out where it is deeper and let down your net to catch some fish. I can imagine Peter's face. Because even his response was this. He says, Master, Simon Peter replied, we walked hard all night and didn't catch a thing. This is what I was thinking. So Peter came back to Jesus Christ, right? He was just holding his net, probably had a long face, like, Man, maybe it's not today. You know how we just, um, if, if it didn't happen today, it's not for me. No, that's not what the word of God said, right? If it didn't happen today, it's not for me. Maybe my opportunity did not come today. Maybe God, if it did not happen, God did not want it to happen. Hello. But did God tell you that? But Peter was there with his net, right? He was probably dejected and sad about the whole thing. Toiling all night and catching nothing. Like you have worked hard. You, are, you know that you have worked hard. But you just cannot see the fruit of your work. And as he was stepping out, Jesus Christ comes to him and says, Hey, hey, Peter, put, launch into the deep and throw your net to catch some fish. And even though Peter was going to obey, he was just like, uh, It seems you did not see that I have been working hard. He said, Master, I have worked hard all night. I didn't catch one thing. I didn't even catch two. I didn't even, it didn't even look like, you know how you can catch a fish and the fish will run? So, so at least you would say, at least I caught something and it ran. I did not catch something that ran away. There was nothing caught. And now you're saying, I should go and let my net down again. But he said, this was what he said. He said, we worked hard all last night and we did not catch a thing. He said, but if you say so, I will let the net down again. That is a flexible heart. 
that is a heart that is willing what do we say flexible word is the capacity the capability to bend easily without breaking is the capability to bend without breaking now then uh, someone just said peter was even a professional fisherman you can imagine this was what he did for life and then he hasn't even seen jesus christ catching fishes before jesus christ just came and said hello come i'll make you fish out of men that's not the way he caught them that's the way he spoke to peter right say come i'll make you fish out of men that's what he told them these people have been doing this all their life so they know the sports and you know i've never even seen i've never seen you catch a fish and then you just come and say i should throw it into the that is a flexible heart that's what god wants us to have it is not Yes, everything I have tried, I have tried it the right way. I have done it the right way. But if you say it, but if you say it, I will do it. If you tell me, I will do it. If you tell me to try again, if you tell me to launch deeper, I will go in. If you tell me that, hey, I am, if you call me chosen, if you say I am, I am meant to manifest God, but even if I have tried everything I can, even if I have been struggling with this addiction forever, and you have said to me that you have called me, you have told me that I am meant to be holy, you have called me holy, but it looks like everything around me is not holy. I will still, I choose to believe. I choose to have a flexible heart and believe that I am what you have called me to be. If we're going to launch deeper this month, if we're going to launch deeper this new month coming, if we're going to launch deeper this year, we have to have a flexible heart. And one thing I wrote here, I said, a flexible heart requires a non-religious mind. What is religion? That's what the Pharisees were doing in Luke, in Luke chapter, in Matthew chapter 12. That's what we're doing. This is how it is meant to be. So they had forgotten the whys. Why, why, why am I doing it? No, this is this is the way, this is the way Moses did it. This is the way Joshua did it. This is the way uh, Daniel did it. We have to do it this way. The Ten Commandments that Moses gave, we have to follow it by the book. That's religion. That's religion. If I am going to experience all that God has spoken to me about this month, telling me that I need to manifest, I need to manifest the God in me, telling me that I need to be holy, telling me that I am holy, telling me that I have to understand the reality of my body that he has created, right? Telling me that I'm a child that he has chosen, telling me that I need to be rooted and grounded. If I'm going to experience all of this, I need to have a flexible heart. Now, I don't know if this ever ever happened to any one of us, but there are times that I've had a religious mindset with with studying the word. So there's an atmosphere I'm supposed to create, right? I don't know if a lot of us do this. When I want to do a devotion, maybe I have to start with music, right? I'll play music, play a nice song speaking tongues for like five minutes, read the Bible, then maybe pray, right? And then the days when I cannot get that, my, that atmosphere. So it feels like, once I just say in Jesus' name, I feel like, you know how you want to pray, but it feels like something is just scratching your body. Like, ah, this is not the right atmosphere. Mm. This is not it. This is not it. So I let it go. That day I don't pray because I'm like I I couldn't find I couldn't find the smoke. <laughs> That's what I call it. I couldn't find that atmosphere. I couldn't find that space. So because I cannot find that space today, I'm not going to spend time with God. That's a religious mindset right there. That's a religious mindset right there. So instead of me to probe, instead of me to say. Holy Spirit, I really want to spend time with you. But my mind is thinking about the food I need to cook. My heart is about to check the time because I am late. My spirit man is just saying, hey, you are hungry. You need to finish this prayer now, 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 and go and start doing your life. 
So I'm just there like, in Jesus' name, Father, bless today, bless today, bless God, bless today, God. And I'm done with the prayer. And I will say in the evening, I will try to build that atmosphere. I will play song. I will speak in tongues. I will read the Bible for one hour. I will even do a scenario. If I don't do it, then I will pray again. Then evening comes. Hello, the day has gone. I am tired. And I'm in my bed. So I must be even thinking about reading my Bible like I told myself. I'm now on Instagram. And let me just catch up. Let me catch up with the day. Before you know, it's 10 p.m. And I'm doing like this. So I'm like this, God, Jesus, you understand my day. Good night, God. And the cycle continues because I was trying to get the right atmosphere. That's a religious mindset. That's not a flexible heart. Now, one thing I have learned after, after getting married and giving birth is there are seasons in life. And as Christians, if we are going to have a flexible heart, to be able to launch into the deep, we need to be able to switch our routines. And they need to be routineless devotions. My de- as, much, as much as it is good that I have a devotion time of morning and evening, that should not be the only time I'm spending with God. And that brings us to the next point, which is if I'm going to have a flexible heart, I need to break the tradition. Now, a lot of us have a tradition of before I can pray, I need to kneel down. If I don't, if there's no space to kneel down, ha, there's no prayer today. So let's say I traveled, I'm on the plane for three days, right? It's time to kneel down. I can't kneel down in the plane, in the plane now. My teammates will be looking at me like, ah, what's going on here? Is this person, is this a suicide bomber? You want to bomb me? Why are you kneeling down? What, what are you trying to do? I'm thinking about what everybody will be saying around me. Before you know, three days ago, I didn't kneel down. So hello, I'm not going to pray today. God should understand, right? There's no, there's no space to kneel down. Yes, so no prayer today. Some of us, if we do not speak in tongues, hey, hey, hey. We have not prayed prayer that day. So maybe you are, like I said, three hours flight. You cannot, you cannot shout. You cannot shout where you are. You want to be shouting in a plane? Hello, are we all Christians together? <laughs> but yeah, because you don't have that atmosphere, it's like you have you have you have minimized the presence of God to an atmosphere, to a to a mind, not even a, to a mindset. So if if I cannot get this, well, first we have we have started. We can only walk. And pray, right? Which is a great thing. Take walks. So you are you are doing both physical exercise and spiritual exercise. Oh, amazing! You're walking, you're praying. So the day that maybe you used to wake up at, at six a.m. to walk, the day that you wake up at seven a.m. because you were extremely tired, and then you cannot take a walk. You're like, ah, I've missed the routine. Oh, so today, today no prayer. I'll wait. I'll I'll move it over to tomorrow. Foul pray. When I was thinking about this, I was thinking about our personal relationships with humans, right? Boy meets girl. Boy likes girl. And imagine that every single time that boy and girl needs to talk, we have, every time we have to introduce ourselves to each other. So every single time I call you, I know your name, you know my name. I'm like, hey, this is evidence. Yeah. We met, we met yesterday at a, at a cafe. Yeah. We spoke for a while. Yeah. Yeah, we talked for two minutes. Then you said you wanted my number. I said I wanted your number. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm the one on the phone now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then we will not start our conversation. So the day that we don't say, hey, this is evidence. Yeah, we met at the cafe. Yeah. We spoke for two minutes. Yeah, then you wanted my number. I took your number. You took my number. They would don't, the day we don't say that, there's no conversation. Because you're like, hello, you have to introduce yourself every time, right? That's how we talk. Imagine how boring that conversation is going to be, right? So, imagine, so let, let me even leave that illustration and go to this one. 
So we have to meet in the same position every day. We have to go to that cafe every single time. Like every time we need to talk, we must come to that cafe. If we don't come, if you call me on the phone, I don't know you. Come to the cafe, I'm going to meet you. That's where we're going to remember each other. Imagine how awkward that relationship is going to be. My point right now is devotion and spending time with God. If we're going to launch into the deep, it is more, it is way 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 more than just 30 minutes in the morning 30 minutes at night it is more than that it is more than i have to find the right atmosphere no no don't don't limit the fellowship with the holy spirit to just the right atmosphere don't limit it oh if i don't pray 20 if i don't pray one hour today i have no prayed no there are days that you will not be able to get that amount of time. But you also do not want to neglect the fellowship with the Holy Spirit because you couldn't create that time. Do we need to have those times where we spend time with God? Yes. But if we keep, it's better that you spend every minute with God than spending one hour every week with God. You're not going to go anywhere. There's no growth. If we're going to have flexible hearts, If we're going to have flexible hearts, we need to meditate on the word of God. Now, one thing I was thinking about when I was, before we even go into meditation on the word of God, breaking the tradition, I used to read, I, I have plans, right? And as a human being, me personally, I get tired of things easily. So I was thinking to myself this week, how can I not get tired of reading the word? How can I make it interesting? You know what I did? I'm reading the same. I'm reading the same plan. I'm reading the Bible throughout the year. I changed my plan. It's the same thing I'm reading. I changed my plan. I just wanted to see something new, something that would intrigue me to want to be here. At all costs, we need to be willing to get the word of God at all costs. We need to be willing to spend time with God at all. If it means me, maybe I used to kneel down. Today, kneeling down is not. It's not. It's not interesting. Let me sit down. But I need to get myself in God's presence at all costs. Maybe I like singing. And then singing is not working today. Can I just say, God, I don't feel like singing. I just want to be with you. But at all costs, every single day of my life, I need to say, how can I get into God's presence? You know the way we, I see Pastor Michael just says, spice of your relationship with God. That is right. Boy, girl, dating. You people get tired. Is that why you say you want to hang out? I think I think we're, we're becoming boring. Yeah, we talk too much on the phone. We need to take a trip. Why are you taking a trip? Because you want you want to you want to make it look like ah uh-uh. where's that Jinji? My faith when I first met this person. The same thing with God. Don't do the same routine every single time. Like ah, every day five a.m. you wake up, you kneel down for the first fifteen minutes you have slept. G- Lord Jesus, Amen. Lord Jesus, amen. Lord Jesus, amen. And then you check the time. Your alarm will just ring. It's time to bed. You're like, oh my Jesus. Oh my Jesus. Oh my Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I will see you later tonight. Lord Jesus, take control of my day. I will go out and come in in Jesus' name. Amen. You are done for the day. You are done for the week. And we're back to square one. And then you're back. They're like, God, why am I not deep in you? Spice it up. <laughs> Spice up your relationship with God. Spice it up. By be very intentional. You know how intentional you can be about every other thing. Be that intentional about today. I am going to spend time with God. And then the one last thing I had before we close, because it's, it's five minutes that we have left. I said, meditate on the word of God. If I'm going to have a flexible heart, I need to meditate on the word of God. The Bible says in Psalm 1, verse 2, that's one of my favorite verses of all time. It says, Said, I will meditate on the word of God. Said he, the man, the blessed is the man that walks. He does not stand in the counsel of the ungodly. He's not dead. He's not dead chit-chatting and talking about people. That's not what he does. But what does he do? He said, he meditates on the word of God. He chews on the word of God day and night. What does it mean to meditate on the word of God? It means that every single time I have devotion, which is good, like I said, it's good to have, it's good to have a routine. It's good to be consistent because consistency is what will help you. Okay, if I'm going to meet with God at 5 a.m. every day and I'm going to read the Bible, one of the intentional things I'm going to do today, every single day, I'll get a memory verse. I will write it down. 
I will think about that memory verse throughout the day. I will think about it throughout the day. So when, when I'm sitting down by myself, when I am working, when I am talking, I'm just thinking. Throughout yesterday, I was thinking about um, Genesis 1 verse 2 when I was talking about the Spirit of God hovering around the surface. I'm like, that's amazing that there was darkness and then the Spirit of God was just moving around it. I kept thinking about it. I'm like, that's, that's interesting. If we are going to grow deeper, the truth is life will not get less easier. That's the truth. You would think when I get married, I'll make time. It's a lie. I'm married. Or you would think when I give birth, I will have time. It's a lie. Life is going to get busy. You think you're busy now. It will get busier. But how are we going to overcome the lies that the devil has told us that busyness is the reason why I'm not spending time with God, why, why I'm not going deeper, why I'm not growing inward and go, getting rooted and grounded. I need to meditate on the word of God. And how can I be intentional about that? I'm going to get a memory verse every day. If I read the Bible, even if it's one chapter I'm reading, I will take a memory verse and I will talk, I will think about it throughout the day. That would even help you remember the Bible. As much as that is great that you can, ah, when they are quoting Bible, you are saying this is where it's from. This chapter, this chapter and this verse, you're like, this is where it came from. This is where it came from. That's good. That's amazing. But that is where the work starts from. That's where the roots start growing deeper. When you are ruminating on the word of God, this is what God's word says. It says this, it says that. If I'm going to manifest God, if I'm going to experience all of God, if I'm going to be deeper this year, I need to meditate on the word of God. I will not be able to tell somebody that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world if I don't believe it. I know about it, but I've not experienced it. So it's like you are seeing, I think there was a man of God that said, I can't remember the story very well. He was talking about how he came to the sitting room and he saw Satan on the chair and he just said, oh, you are here. When you are done, go. And he went to sleep. And no, it's not all of us that we do that. That's the truth. So I've not gotten to that point. They usually say Rome was not built in a day, right? Yeah, it was not built in a day. I'm not going to grow deep in one day. I will not start healing the sick in one day. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's Isaiah 61 verse 1. He has anointed me. But if I don't know the anointing I carry, if I am not even meditating on the word of God, hello, I don't know God enough. I will just be saying it. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. When I see the sick, I'm thinking, do I really have the spirit of God? If I now pray and it does not get healed, won't they say I'm not a Christian? Can I run away? Can I? Can I? Can I hide behind somebody? No. Grow. Get a memory verse daily. Chew the word of God. Be intentional. Be intentional. Today, just say today I'm going to spend time with God. I might not be able to pray one hour throughout the day yet. Of course I will get there. But where I am now is I will start getting memory verses. I will intentionally think about what I read in the morning. I must grow. At all costs, at all costs, I must grow. I just pray this evening. I want us to pray that God give me a flexible heart. Help me to break religion. Help me to break tradition. Help me to meditate on your word. Joshua 1 verse 8. Help me to meditate on your word. Help me to chew your word daily. Help me to chew your word daily. Second Timothy 2 verse 15 says, study to show yourself approved. Help me to chew your word daily. Give me a heart that is flexible. Help me to not stick with routine that I get used to doing things. I just, I'm just doing it. I'm just going with the flow. So today I, I read the Bible because I have to prove to my friends that I have read the Bible, you version. I'll take it out. I read it today. No. I'm done with that life. I'm done with that life. I want to grow deeper. I want my root to spread. It should go deep and grow upward. Let my fruit look like my root. Help me to grow deeper. Help me to grow deeper. Just pray that prayer right now. Say, God, this week I'll be intentional about getting memory verses. I'll be intentional about meditating on your word daily. I'll be intentional. I will not make excuses like, oh, I'm very busy. That's why I couldn't play the word of God. That's why I couldn't listen. That's why I couldn't read. That's why I couldn't spend time with God. No, I will spend time with you throughout the day. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Oh, Father, Lord, we want to thank you. Thank you for this series. Thank you for this team of the month, Deeper. God, we thank you because we're not just learning for learning's sake. No, no, no. We're not just marking the register and just doing monthly um, um, readings and just saying, oh, this month, this is the perfect team for this one. No, 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 no. We are growing. We are growing. We are growing. Our root is stretching deeper. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are growing inward and outward. Oh, Lord, help us. Help us to not just hear. This This word will fall on fertile ground. Holy Spirit, begin to walk on our hearts. Wherever we need to grow, wherever we need to make changes, wherever we need to be flexible, wherever we even need to be rigid, help us, Lord God, to make the changes in the name of Jesus Christ. And God will give you all the praise and all the glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. I pray that as we go this week, we would have a great week. Whatsoever testimonies we are waiting to hear, in the name of Jesus, it will meet with us in the name of Jesus Christ. The things we are chasing after will chase after us in the name of Jesus Christ. At the end of this week, when we come back, when we meet on Saturday for the special event, we will come with testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we want to say, be thou exalted. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen and amen. We are better lights. We exist to experience and be the expressions of God in a broken world. Make sure you go out this week and be deeper. Have a lovely week, guys. God bless you.